Hello everyone and welcome to this video. I'm Luke from Expat Aviator and today we're going to be looking at primary surveillance radar and secondary surveillance radar. So as with the rest of the videos in this series, it's based at people who are currently training for their S3 in the UK or are waiting to train for their S3. Um, as it is based off the VAT UK syllabus, but it should really apply to anyone. So just before we start, as always, a disclaimer. Um, it isn't endorsed by VAT UK. There may be some mistakes. So if you do spot any or you have any questions, please do let us know in the comments and we'll answer them as best we can. So the contents of this video, uh, we're going to look at mode A, mode C and mode S transponders. We're going to look at primary surveillance radar and its limitations. We'll then look at secondary surveillance radar and its limitations. And then finally, we'll look at an evaluation of uh, all three together. So with the transponders, then, the most basic transponder is a mode A transponder. Um, and a mode A transponder, all it does is it transmits the four digit code that's in the transponder. I should probably just say here, a transponder is a bit of equipment on the aircraft that basically sends a signal back to the ground. And it has codes on it from 0000 to 7777. Um, most of those, well, all the codes are allocated to certain units and some of them have specific uses. So for example, 7700 is the code for a general emergency, 7500 is a hijack and so on. Um, but yeah, a mode A transponder just simply transmits that code back to the controller. A mode C transponder is a mode A transponder, but as well as the code, it also transmits the aircraft's pressure altitude. So that's why on that sim, when you're controlling, you'll see the altitude readout next to the aircraft that's coming off the transponder. And then we have mode S transponders. So mode S transponders are mode C transponders, but as well as the uh, code and the pressure altitude, they also transmit a lot more data, such as call sign, altitude, um, autopilot selected values, so the altitude, heading, speed, and so on. So it, it transmits a lot more information. Um, on that sim, every transponder is a mode C transponder. We currently don't use mode S because it would require a lot of recoding. Um, so hopefully it'll be with us in a few years, but it'll be a while. And uh, the pilot clients make it impossible, as far as I'm aware, to simulate a mode A transponder, so everything will be a mode C transponder. So let's move on to types of radar then. So we've got primary surveillance radar. Um, although it's the oldest, primary surveillance radar is actually still the most accurate form of radar we have. The way it works is you have a big spinny radar dish at the airport, it sends out a beam, and then whatever's in the sky will reflect that beam back to the radar. Whatever's refracted reflected back, sorry, just shows as big blips on the screen. So it sees absolutely everything. The key thing is you don't need a transponder to be seen by primary surveillance radar. It does have some limitations though. So it's line of sight limited. So if you're flying really low, the radar doesn't see everywhere. It only sees certain bits of the sky, so it may miss you. Equally, if you're going overhead the radar, it doesn't point upwards, so it won't see you there either. So there will be like black spots on the radar. Um, it also has weak returns off carbon composite aircraft, which is starting to become more of an issue. Aircraft like the 787, they're made out of carbon composite materials. Um, it doesn't return a stronger signal off them, therefore making the radar less accurate. And then arguably one of the biggest limitations to it is that it reflects absolutely anything that's there. So um, you can get big flocks of birds will be reflected back that would look like aircraft. Uh, large clouds with rain in them will also be reflected back. And these all just show as blips. So you really have to be careful looking at what's what. So let's move on to secondary surveillance radar. Secondary surveillance radar or SSR is a newer type of radar and it works purely off transponders. So you may have seen these on the top of um, control towers, real world, but the tiny little bars that spin round. That's an SSR receiver. Um, and basically how they work is they'll send out a signal and all SSR works on one frequency, 1090 megahertz. So it sends out a signal. When the aircraft transponder receives that signal, it replies back on the same frequency with whatever information it can uh, transmit. So mode C would reply back with the code it's uh, squawking. And the pressure altitude, mode S would reply back with everything the mode S does. And mode A would just reply back with the code and nothing more. Uh, there are limitations to SSR. Obviously, you need a transponder. So 
Again, not a problem on VATSIM because every pilot client makes it look like you have a transponder, whether you do or you don't. Um, it, the, the, arguably, the major issue with it is that there aren't enough squawks. So, um, as I said, it only goes from 0000 to 7777. Again, not a huge problem on VATSIM right now, but it is getting worse. But real world, there are so many aircraft, and the number of aircraft is increasing that we're actually running out of squawk codes. Um, so that's why there's such a specific plan of who has what codes. You can't use anyone else's squawk codes. Um, and the other two issues we get are fruiting and garbling. So fruiting is basically where the signals get delayed. Um, so the, the receiver will send out a signal. The aircraft won't reply straight away, or it may reply with two that have got bounced off something. So the radar kind of stutters in a way, if you want to imagine it like that. Garbling is where you get two replies that get merged together. So let's imagine you've got aircraft A and aircraft B. Because their SSR works on the same frequency, if they fly over the top of each other, let's just say aircraft A is doing 100 knots and aircraft B is doing 70 knots. As they go over the top of each other, the radar can sometimes get confused as to which transponder the signal is actually coming from. And so what it will do is it will mix up certain bits of information. So let's say in that case, all of a sudden when they pass over each other, aircraft B would now be doing 100 knots and aircraft A will be doing 70 knots. Once they're far enough away from each other, the replies will then switch back round to what they should be. So that's what garbling is. As it says there, many of these issues are addressed by MODES, but we don't use it on that sim yet. So there's a nice table there, courtesy of Charlie Watson and the introduction to radar document from that UK, which gives us a, a nice evaluation of PSR, SSR and Mode S. You don't have to know all of that table, you just have to know the main key points, but it is good to give you some more background knowledge. So I hope this video has been helpful. Um, hopefully you'll now be able to explain what primary surveillance radar and secondary surveillance radar are. And uh, yeah, hope to see you again soon. Thanks.